Good morning. It's 9 a.m. Friday, June 16th, 2023. Welcome to the Good News, live at 9 on Facebook and available later on our YouTube channel. Please be sure to comment in the chat. This is a presentation of the Allen Park Presbyterian Church, and I'm Suzanne Maxey. I'm an elder at Allen Park Press. And good morning, Carrie Van. Good morning to you, Suzanne, and to all of our people who are watching. Sorry, we're a little late, but computers need to be updated. And Friday, there's always something. <laughs> so good morning. <laughs> good morning to all of you. Um, had a crazy weather night last night. Oh, yeah. I uh, hope everyone is okay. A couple of people saw hail and there was a tornado in Monroe. So we're thankful that today will be a much calmer and more beautiful day. So good morning to all who are watching. I guess I should say who I am. <laughs> I am Carrie Van, and I work at the church. And good morning to Kevin Vaughn, who's watching. And I do believe it's Kevin's birthday. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday. Hi, Robin Allen, Tracy Crutz, Amy Bowerman, Deanna's watching. Yay, school's out. Yeah. Yes, I think all the teachers are probably saying that. <laughs> yes, a lot of teachers are happy. A lot of kids are happy and parents are probably sort of happy. <laughs> Happy, happy Friday live to you, Ken Woods. Hi, Joan Riggs, um, daughter number two. We love you, Joan. Good morning, Sandy. So, Sue, we have a guest, so we probably shouldn't be babbling. We need to no. do our announcements and tell everyone what's going on around town first. Yep. Well, first thing today is Kids Day at the Farmer's Market. Perfect timing for them, right? Hi, Judy. Oh, yeah. Perfect timing. So what's Kids Day? What does that mean? Well, there's going to be many different activities for kids of all ages in which to participate. Lots of bubbles, outdoor games, and smaller interactive games that the kids can win prizes with. This is also the first day of summer. So with the kids just getting out of school for the summer, this is a great way to start the vacation. Come out and have some beginning of summer fun. That looks fun. What a great timing for them. So Elm Park Farmer's Market is right across the street from the church. Do, 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 do. Um, hi, Judy Hatch. <clears throat> uh, Sunday morning is an important day for our mission team. They are leaving early in the morning for Pikeville, Kentucky. They have a meeting at 530 that day. So they'll be on the road getting ready for their mission trip and all of the wonderful aspects that will enter their life helping others down in Kentucky. Good morning, Norma. So we will pray for their travel and we'll pray that the Holy Spirit guides them along their way and they come back enthused for mission and share all of their stories with us. What a great way to start. Mission trips always start on Father's Day, I noticed. <laughs> I've, been, I've been on many of them and we always leave on Father's Day. So we... Um, Shout out to the fathers who have been advisors for so many years and always leave on Father's Day, sometimes without any member of their family with them. So thank you to everyone who serves. Yeah, and it's 10 o'clock on Sunday's Worship in the Sanctuary, and it'll be live streamed as usual on Facebook and YouTube. And it is Father's Day. We wish to honor all the father, fatherly figures in our lives, and we will have donuts for dads if you come in person. Yes, knowing um, knowing the deacons, we will have donuts for everyone. Yes. <laughs> and we classify dads as anyone who has been a father figure in your life. If you're a foster father, a stepdad, a dog dad, we don't discriminate. All dads. Yes. So make sure you get your donut. I believe we passed them out on the way out. I'm not 100% sure. That's a Judy Martin thing. But they'll be there. Not too early. And then Monday is actually a federal holiday, Juneteenth. And while Juneteenth has been unofficially celebrated for more than two centuries by our African-American brothers and sisters, Congress voted in 2021 to officially make it the 11th federal holiday. Deriving its name from combining June and 19th, it is celebrated on the anniversary of anniversary of the order issued by Major General Gordon Granger on June 19th, 1865, 
wow. claiming freedom for the slaves in Texas. And remember, the banks will be closed. Happy Freedom Day. Um, also, on Tuesday in the parlor at 5.30 p.m., there's an exciting thing going on. 20 years ago, speaking of mission trips, yeah. we had a group a group of um, mission travelers went with um, Reverend Kirk Miller, and I, I think Kirk, I don't know who else went, and they went to Northern Ireland, and they're going to celebrate by having a little casual get-together, watch their old video from the trip, which is probably going to be so fun for them to watch. A lot of them have children now, so if you haven't heard about it, either call the office or contact me, Amanda. Carlson Agdi is the one who is putting this together. And then they have a senior high youth connection camp going up on Thursday. So that's really great this year that we're able to celebrate these kinds of memories and get together again. So they're going to have um, a pizza or uh, not a pizza, um, hot potato, baked potato bar. I guess that's a private joke, something about what's <laughs> What's good at, after a long day of traveling? A uh, potato bar. A so, potatoes. Yes. So we do have a sign up for that, but I mean, it's kind of getting late. Just let us know. I'm sure Amanda would love to hear from you. And I it goes. That was 20 years ago. Wow. I know. I can't believe it was 20 years ago. I was here when they went. You know, me too. <laughs> yeah. So, and then Wednesday, there's a car show going on in Allen Park between Southfield and Roosevelt. That's always a fun thing to stop by. It's free. Get to look at cool cars. There's raffles, music, food. So lots of stuff going on. Uh, Pat Clemens, happy Father's Day to all the fathers, furrier, human. Thanks, Patrick. Should have asked you. That's a lot easier to say than what I've been saying. There's a see through up a graphic for the car show that's going on. So feel free to join in in some Allen Park fun. All right, we should um, probably get through our camp announcements real quick and get our guest who is Patty Allen in this meeting with us. Yep. I already talked about the Senior High Youth Connection Camp that starts Thursday. We have a grandparents camp opportunity to either be a grandparent, an aunt, an uncle, and bring some of the younger people with you. It'll be very intergenerational as far as an adult bringing children, kind of a great camp to introduce them to camp, how much we love it, do some of the things we do at the kids camp so they'll be ready to go to camp when the time comes. Um, Deanna McDonnell is the director for that camp. So if you need to be talked into going, just give her a call. She grew up at, she, she grew up at camp and um, she will help you convince yourself to go. So just give her um, a shout out if you have questions. Um, if you want to learn more about camps and how to register, go to the website under the Camp Aconda, and it will give you blow-by-blow blow instructions on how to sign up. And the spots are limited, and they're going fast, so get on there and register today before they're all gone. Yeah, now that ever, I'm going to say, like Sue said, now that kids are out of school, they're going to start thinking about camp. So I would definitely get on there and sign up soon. Well, we're hiring, right? We need a part-time church custodian. Yes, we have a very wonderful custodian who is uh, moving on to his um, chosen career path. Ryan um, is on his way to not working at the church at all. I think he only works there very briefly right now. So if you are looking for a part-time job in a wonderful environment, Get to work with Rita, which is an experience of a lifetime, I guarantee you. Just let us know. You, uh, Barry Davis is our chair of the personnel committee, and he has applications. And all you have to do is contact the office, me, Barry, anyone, and we will get you that application. I'm Ann Winslow went, oh, Ann Winslow went on that wonderful mission trip. We did so many things. Leo was our van driver. We saw the wall in Mexico, worked with the homeless in, Air, in uh, Arizona. Yeah, and, and became a youth advisor when she was um, older than some. And it was an experience that she loved more than you can possibly imagine. You're never too old to get involved. 
great. Ask Ann next time you see her. She'll tell you about it. So we probably should get moving and get Patty in here, right? Well, I, I just have one little plug to do. Um, you're going to be out of town next Friday for the good news live at nine. And we wish you safe travels. Um, I will have Barry and Margo Davis helping me co-host. We have something special cooked up. So please join us. Shh. It's a surprise. I hope I can tune in. Um, what am I saying? I'm tell everybody to join us next Friday. <laughs> yes, I hope I can watch because um, that's going to be a great show. Thank you to Barry and Margo for filling in for me. I appreciate it. All right. Well, let's get our guest in here. All right. Can you do it, Sue? Because I'm looking at Facebook on a delay, which is crazy. There she is. Hi, Patty. Good morning, morning Patty Allen. Good morning. How are you? Great. One of my favorite people. I'm so thrilled that you're here with us today. Well, thanks for asking me. It was this is an honor. It's definitely an honor for us to have you. I've done some really fun things with you and gotten to know you a little bit better. So I'm we're hoping that we can share that with our viewers. Sure. So you are a, a ruling elder, which sounds like such an amazing thing to say. I always tell people something I don't always, I, I sometimes tell people I'm an ordained deacon and I always think that, wow, that sounds so cool. <laughs> so a ruling elder is someone who is on the board of, on the session right now. So Patty is one of our elders on the session. And maybe Sue wants to make this announcement. You are going to be chairing a new committee next season. Uh, yes, yes, and I'm looking forward to that too. It's called. Um, well, did you want to talk about it too? No, so, uh, oh, well, you talk uh, about it. Okay. Yeah, you well, talk it's about called it. nurturing and discipleship, and um, we're looking forward to um, making it more than just church school, Sunday school, um, having it like extend to include the entire congregation. And so we're going to be working on, uh, we're, we're going to meet over the summer and try to get something going um, before the summer is out. So stay tuned for that. All well, right. In other words, you're going to nurture me too then, eh? Yep, we're going to nurture right, everybody. Cool. <laughs> oh, I'd love to hear that. So if you, a nurture and discipleship sounds very formal, it's the, we used to call it Christian ed, but it's it's working with youth. If, if you love working with youth, please get a hold of Patty Allen or contact the church and we'll have Patty Allen contact you because we need a big team. A big team makes it better for everyone. So now is your chance. Get in while the getting is good for sure. I can't wait. Get in on the ground floor. <laughs> cannot wait to see what Patty does with our current wonderful um teachers and Sunday school teachers and preschool teachers and can't wait for that so that's wonderful a lot of you might recognize Patty from playing her flute or piccolo during church yeah that's one of my favorite things to do yes and I I don't know if you want to share the story on how you gained confidence to play at church but it was a great story it's up to you but I I know it um, sure. Um, so I've played handbells with the church for, well, since 95. And um, Wendy Reimers was the, was our director for much of it. Plus she was also the uh, adult choir director. And one Sunday or during rehearsal, she asked me if I would play with the choir and I thought, sure, how hard can it be? <laughs> I didn't say that out loud, but I was thinking it's got to be like fifth grade music, which first year music. And then I, um, and then she gave me the music and said there was, it, we were playing in two weeks and oh, I, it was not first year music. So I just kind of rehearsed at home, like three hours a day to get ready for it. <laughs> I was so worried about making the choir look bad by messing up. And 
it went so well. And um, then she asked me again, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, geez, here we go again. And but that was a few months later. And so I I asked um, Maple Heights um, if I called them up and asked talk to the activities director. And I said, um, could I play for the residents? And, you know, if they like it, maybe we can make it a regular thing. And my purpose was to get used to playing in front of an audience. And so I did it that first time and they liked it and they wanted me to keep coming back. And so I've been doing that since I either 2015 or 2016 is when I started doing that. And it's really helped. And it's just made it so that I don't get nervous anymore. Um, and then I've noticed it's, I've met a lot of, a lot of the residents um, and many of them have shared things with me. You know, they were so happy and um, they would request certain songs. And it was, I, I could tell that it was medicinal for them. And for that reason, I made a point to go back every week because they enjoyed it so much. And um, the pandemic shut it down, of course, but then as soon as they were welcoming people back, I would go back and play. And then just a few weeks ago, um, my car was in the shop and I told them I need my car by a certain time because I didn't tell them why, but I wanted to be ready to go to Maple Heights. and. Um, it wasn't ready, so I packed up my wagon, a wagon that I commandeered for my grandkids many years ago, and um, I put all my stuff in it, music stand, flute music, and I walked to Maple Heights. Wow. I really wow. wanted to play, <laughs> and it was good exercise, so um, so yeah, and it's just, it's something I really enjoy doing. So Yeah, that is, that is the kind of dedication that I've always seen in you. I've never noticed you looking nervous, but it's it's nice that you would say that because it encourages others to get out of their safe spot. I, I know that um, you have done karaoke flute, which people might not understand how great that was we, when we did our events on the North Lawn during the street fair. And you could play for hours and hours and your knowledge of music was amazing. But when we did that, I remember you told me that one of the gentlemen that you had been um, in contact with at Maple Heights said that he wanted you to play at his funeral. Tell, tell us about that. Oh, yeah. Um, he was probably 96 years old when he moved there. And he, he was drawn to um, Ave Maria, the Schubert version, which I think is the most, the one everybody thinks of. And, um, and I played that like, I don't know, once a month there. And I was going every week and he would ask if I would play it, you know, every week and please wait till I get out here. And so, um, cause they, they were eating lunch when I arrived. And so he, and he was one of the first to show up and, um, and he would, he was in a, a wheelchair and he pulled up right next to me cause he wanted to kind of see the music. And so, um, and he was an opera singer. And um, he asked me if I would play Ave Maria at his funeral. And I thought he was joking. And, and then, you know, first it felt awkward, like, well, why would you bring that up? You know, let's not plan a funeral right now. And, and every week he asked me and um, he said, give me your number so I can give it to my daughter so she can call you. And I said, well, they can get a hold of me at the front desk. So, you know, all the while thinking this is never going to you know, happen. And so one day in December, 2019, I got a phone call and this lady introduced herself and she said, I'm, I'm Joe, the opera singer's daughter. And, um, I said, Oh, nice to meet you. And then I immediately said, Oh, what happened? And she said, well, he passed last night, but he hounded me to get a hold of you so that to see if you would sing or not sing, but play at his funeral. So the funeral was the following Saturday and um, I just couldn't say no. I mean, if it really meant that much to him. And so 
that went well. And um, yeah, I mean, it was, it was, I, I'd known him for two years that he was there until he passed and, um, and it was nice. So, what an honor. What an yeah, honor. It was an honor. Oh, what an honor. I, when I was Facebook stalking you to, to come up with questions with, for me and Sue to ask you, I know it's illegal, Gary. <laughs> Well, I mean, I did it in a nice way. We're friends. So and I noticed that you're a special ed teacher and I didn't know that. Have, have you always been a special education teacher? Yeah, no, I, um, I started off as a math teacher, math and science. And, um, and I noticed that the, I wanted to be able to help the kids who struggled the most. And i felt like I could do that if I learned special ed strategies. And so that's what led to that. And then um, I, the year that I started in special ed, well, maybe a couple of years later, I started getting students with autism uh, placed in my program. And I didn't know that much about autism because I was certified in learning disabilities. And um, so I decided I'll just get certified in autism. I mean, I, you have to renew your teaching certificate every five years. So, um, so I went through that program and, and then after that, I didn't have any more children with autism in my program. So, um, but it's, you know, it's something that um, I, I'm so glad I did it. Um, it's opened up a whole new world. It, it, um, I just, I feel like it's made me more compassionate working with kids. And um, it's been a learning experience every day. So it's just been, it's been wonderful. I've had um, uh, people ask me like at Maple Heights, they don't know me as playing the flute and they'll say, um, so what do you do for a living? And I'll say, well, I'm a teacher. Oh, so you're a music teacher. I said, no, I'm not. <laughs> but, you know, they always assume music teacher. But, um, but yeah. And I've had kids, I've taken my flute to school and I've played for the kids. And they ask these thought provoking questions like, um, uh, I'll never forget the seventh grader who lit up and he said, can you show me how to do that? And I thought, uh, Wow, <laughs> and you don't learn it in an hour, <laughs> and uh, and I had to explain that to him. Um, and then I had another kid say to me, "How can you see what you're doing? You know, because the fingers are out here." And I thought, you know what? You don't need to see what you're doing. You just need to see the music. And so, so yeah, they they make me think about things that you know I never think of, and. And then I have kids in, um, like right now, I, I've been working with seventh graders and um, I'll see them carrying a flute or an instrument around and I'll say, oh, how do you like band? And I hate it. I can't wait to get out of it. My mom to have make me do this. And they say, oh, please talk to me before you quit. Cause you know, it's hard the first couple of years and then it gets easy and or easier. So. Right. And, and if you can explain to them, like where, where it has put you, you know, that's, they just view it as something extra that they have to do, but they don't realize that if you make it a part of your life, it becomes a ministry. I have, I have some comments from the viewers. I couldn't have said this better. Norma Bentley said, what a kind and talented person you are, Patty. I'm sure you've touched so many lives. Tracy Crutt said, I'm crying. Such a touching story. Uh, all that keeps uh, going through my mind is, what better person to lead up nurture and discipleship than this woman? <laughs> yes. Come on. I mean, if you don't want to get on board, then you really don't want to work with children because imagine where this is going to go next year with Patty in charge of, of getting this program going. So absolutely wonderful. I forgot that you played handbells. That's right. Wow. Yeah. Yes. Oh, so yeah. I mean, that is fantastic. Did you play handbells before you came to uh, Allen Park? No. And I I kind of stumbled across it when um, there was a blurb in the church newsletter. Yes. 
I asked into, you know, hey, we got a couple spots open, please join the handbell choir. And Carolyn was the director at the time. And when she called me, um, I remember her saying, it helps if you can read music, but we'll teach you everything you know. And, um, and yeah, well, we have to uh, count to four, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've recruited many people by saying, hey, can you count to four? Then you can learn to read music. And sometimes you only need to count to three. And it and it's really it isn't hard and you know so anybody who's listening you know we're we're trying to get the handbell choir going again. Um, at one point we had ten people, and um, and that you know we can have more because we have the bells for it, um, and it's a lot of fun. It is. You know, we at rehearsal we would always you know, get to laughing and joking and just, it was a lot of fun. I, at the time, I think my, my kids were teenagers and I would come like oh, frustrated and, <laughs> you know, and uh, leave there feeling really good. So there's something about music that's so medicinal. You're so right about that. I, mm -hmm. I work a lot with Amy Bowerman we did um, a contemporary service for like five years and no matter how stressed out we were, I remember whenever Amy would sing, she would just feel refreshed and completely renewed because like logistics is one thing, but like doing it is, is what makes things so. So if you're listening and you want to try something new, I'm a big fan of small groups. Handbells is nothing more than a small group. You become close to the group that you're working with. You learn a new skill. It's good for your mind. You get to uh, ring the bells at church. We used to do it once a month. There's no reason why we can't do that. People love the hand bells. It's beautiful. So there's another thing. Just call the church office next week, everyone. <laughs> sign up Sign up for everything. I know me and Sue are really um, stuck on this, but you came and donated your time, many hours of your time. When we did our event on the North Lawn during the street fair, it was so hot oh and you, <laughs> it was so hot and you played for hours and drew people in remember the family that came with the little kids and their dad is um a musician and a singer they sat there we were dancing on the patio and it was just beautiful i'll just never forget that if we do it again we're, we're definitely inviting you right now on online hey yeah, i'm okay with that Right. I, I go every year to play at the Walk to End Alzheimer's, uh, which is at the Detroit Zoo. And um, and it's kind of the same thing, you know, like karaoke style, because I, I have my big box and um, play music from all generations. So to get everyone interested. So Right. And Patty talked about her wagon, which is really is a lot funnier than you think, because she did commandeer the wagon that was her grandkids and it has all of her flute stuff in it it's like a blue wagon and she has like a speaker and stands and all the things she needs to like set up it's the cutest thing i've ever seen and and family wise you have two daughters two grandkids and do you have dogs cats that kind of thing as well <laughs> yes i have i have I have two daughters i now have five grandkids because my oh. Because Jen got married and kind of the Brady Bunch thing. He had three sons. Hey, how she fun. has her son and daughter. So, um, and I do have two cats, both of which belonged to Jen at one point. And um, you inherited them, eh? I inherited them. And they don't get along. So I have to keep them separated. <laughs> and um, otherwise, because my one cat is cross eyed. And she has no depth perception and she's come out of the other room with a bloody nose. Oh, and I no. know it's because my mean cat, I call her the mean cat, has chased her and got her in the face. So, you know, but anyway, and then um, that's it for now. But yes, I remember, I remember I convinced you to let me send a sunshine bag to your grandkids during the pandemic. That was fun. Oh, yeah. And they yes. loved it. Yes, I love doing it. We have, uh, I asked you what your favorite scripture was, and you gave me uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. Would you like to tell people why that one? Is um, you walk by faith 
not by sight or just walk by faith, not by sight. And um, yeah, I when I was growing up, my mom and dad loved watching Freddie Price Sunday mornings. And um, he always ended his sermons with that. And um, and so it just kind of stuck with me. And it makes sense, you know, walk by faith, not by sight. And, you know, let the Lord guide you. And um, the other one that I couldn't think of, um, I kept, you know, thinking that was in Philippians. And the other one is um, Philippians 4.13. And that's, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And I've used that one many times, like before going on playing the flute at church, I would think about that. Um, I've even in the classroom when a kid would ask me, like, I don't understand how to do this math problem. And I'd look at it and think, oh, yeah, I don't either. <laughs> but then I would think, you know, <laughs> I can do all things. And then it would help me. <laughs> and, it would, and then I would figure out how to, you know, explain it. So, so yeah. There's um, it it works, you know. Yeah, so those I, are my two favorites. Sue, let me read a few comments because we're we're past time. But I mean, I could keep talking to her for hours. Okay. Norma said, "Patty, thank you for sharing your talents with us at APBC and your very inspiring interview this morning." Thank you, Suzanne okay. Carey. Thank you, Norma. We love you, Sandy Sauerbeck. I enjoy hearing you play. And Bob Ando said hi to Alan Bryans. So the next time you see Patty playing that flute at worship, you're going to feel a whole lot different after you've heard um, this wonderful person's honesty and determination about life and how she strives to make other people's lives better. We just, I've always just loved you and I love you even more. And thank oh, you, Patty. Thank you, Carrie. Love you too. And thank you, everyone, for the nice comments. Yep, they're throwing up hearts in the chat. So, Sue, take us away. Okay, well, I want to thank Patty for being with us again today. And, um, yeah, we are kind of out of time. I had something else I was going to do, but we're out of time. So we'll uh, do it some other time. We hope you will join us next Friday for the good news when Barry and Margo are going to help me out. And we do have something special. So please join us then. And it's a secret. But tell everybody it's a secret. So. Yes. Tell everyone it's a secret and come and watch. You know it's going to be great with these three, Sue, Barry, and Margo. Thank you, everyone, for all your kind comments. Thank you for helping us um, uh, learn more about Patty Allen. And don't forget to get involved because what better leadership could you possibly want? Everyone have a great day and we'll remember see. you're a beloved child of God and God loves you. And so do we. Bye. Bye everyone. See you Friday. Thank have you. Patty. A wonderful week. Thank you. Thanks Patty. Bye. Thanks. Bye.